Most successful business owners take great pride in being their own bosses, creating something of value and having control over how much money they make. The ability to be self-fulfilled by doing your own thing is one of the traits that drive many towards business ownership. Welcome to the Creative Money Discussion Show. I am your host, Mervyn Woodrum, and I will be with you for the next hour. Welcome back to the Creative Monday Discussion Show. I am your host, Mervyn Bodram, and we are Creatives Transforming Lives. You know, that's our vision. That's why we're here. We believe in creativity, entrepreneurship, innovation. and We believe in uh, uh, just creating an environment where those who are doing transformative work through their business ventures can be showcased, can be introduced uh, to the world, to Belize and the world, right? And so that's part of why we have the show, because we love stories. We love to hear the stories. We love to tell the stories. We love to meet entrepreneurs and we really hear what they're doing. And tonight is a, a special night because we are talking to two Belizean entrepreneurs who are using their brand uh, to really make a difference in their space to really kind of craft something that can be exported from Belize. Entrepreneur is so power, powerful. Um, entrepreneurs have the ability to shift things in our community. We see problems, we jump in to try to solve those problems, and then we are working to, to bring transformation to our community. Part of the show uh, and the goal and the aim of the show is to inspire you through the stories of these entrepreneurs and business owners to also motivate you. you know we're in a time of covid where a lot of a lot of folks got hit hard and a lot of folks kind of came under this oppression this heaviness kind of trying to feel figure out what to do and we wanted to to be able to motivate people out of that hey to, to let them know that hey in the midst of challenging challenges in the midst of hard time there are those who are charting the course forward, pivoting, making adjustments, and still making an impact. And to present these folks to you guys and help encourage you to take action. And then finally, transform lives. We want lives to be transformed. We want our community to be transformed. We want the world to be changed through what we're doing with business, right? And so that's why we're in this space. And so I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone that's tuned in. Thank you guys for joining with us. It's been uh, a year already. The year is almost up. And I just want to thank you guys for just being with us, showing up every week, listening to these stories, commenting, and just being engaged uh, with our audience. Um, we want to know where you're tuned in from as well. So I just want to encourage you to use the comment section. Uh, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, if you're on LinkedIn, use the comment section to be part of the discussion tonight. Uh, also, if you're watching on TNC, we want to encourage you to send in a WhatsApp message to 623-7898. And that's how you can also join the conversation tonight. We want to say welcome to those who are tuned in uh, as well on Caribbean Fest TV in Europe and the Caribbean region. And those who will watch the rebroadcast on Facebook, on YouTube, LinkedIn, as well as those watching on So Arise TV in Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, we, we're, we're a global uh, live show. We're a global podcast. Because of COVID, we've had the ability to kind of go and expand beyond the borders of Belize. And we're excited about that. And we will continue to push the boundaries of what we are doing. Tonight's show is brought to you by Task Belize Limited, a digital marketing company based here in Belize, my company. And our passion, our goal is to help you tell your story, reach more people, and close more sales. Are you ready to move your business forward? Are you ready to make an impact? Are you ready to go beyond what is? Hungry for more traffic, engagement, customers? Here is your chance to become more successful in the digital world with fresh, creative, innovative strategies for your organization's messaging, website, videos, graphics, photos, and sound. Skyrocket your brand's digital identity. We do what works. We do things differently. We learn from you to understand your business needs, tell your story, 
reach more people, and close more sales. Contact us now to take your business to the next level. Tass Belize, the heart of entrepreneurial innovation. All right, welcome back, welcome back. And speaking of Tass Belize, we mentioned this last week and we're celebrating our 15 year anniversary this year. It's been an amazing journey. Uh, just, just to serve the general public, to serve you, our customers. And um, Task Police is my first initiative, my first business venture. And I'm honored, it's, I'm humbled to, to say that we've been around for 15 years. We talked about this last, last week, but you know, 25% of businesses make it to the, the 15 year marker. So we're excited that we've made it to this major milestone and we plan to be around much longer. But for our activities, one of the things we did, we had a week long giveaway we we were feeling very generous and we wanted to invite the general public to celebrate with us so we had a week of giveaways where we gave different prizes services that we offer to several folks and so i want to say congratulations to all the winners we had five winners so far and i just want to quickly mention their name some of them are also uh regular um uh viewers regular um um Folks who tune in to the show as well on a weekly basis. So I want to say congratulations to Andrea. She won the one prize. Jamira Augustine, she won the two prize. Shereen Valero won the three prize. And Marcus Vasquez won the four prize. And finally, Carissa Alvarez won the five prize, right? And after we went through that whole spiel, we, we realized that we wanted to give one more uh, bonus gift away to someone so it's still open right now so i just want to encourage you guys if you want to win that bonus prize and basically the bonus prize is you can choose either a website build a new website build or a free video production by task all you need to do is go to taskbelize.com backslash birthday and find out more information how you can participate the deadline is tomorrow night i believe at 9 p.m so you want to take advantage of this i believe this is something that you know our goal our goal is to help and support entrepreneurs in this time. And this is one of the ways that we can do it by giving back uh, some of our service. So again, go to taskbelize, T-A-S-Belize.com backslash birthday and find out how you can participate and get a chance to win this bonus prize. Well, well, without any further ado, we want to move forward. We want to get in and uh, meet our first guest. Um, as I mentioned tonight, it's all about Entrepreneur Spotlight. We're going to be talking to two entrepreneurs from here in Belize that's making a mark. Uh, before I bring them on, I just want to say good night to Giselle Rayburn, who's tuned in and commented as well. And I want to invite you, encourage you, I want to encourage you to, to reach out to your friends, get them on, get them tuned in. Uh, those who really want to know what's going on with entrepreneurs in Belize as well, invite them to tune in to tonight's show. So uh, let me bring on our first guest tonight. Uh, she is the founder, the owner of Dot Box Donuts. Uh, we're going to bring Miss Ashley Rayburn on. Let's help me welcome her to the screen, Ashley Rayburn. Good evening. Hi. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. Laughing because you said my sister's name. I said your sister's name? <laughs> where, where? Giselle Rayburn. Giselle. Oh, you have family <laughs> tuning in. Awesome. So, you know, it's great to have family tune in and supporters tune in. And, you know, let's just start right there. Uh, mm -hmm. Since you brought it up, talk to us a little bit about um, that box of donuts. Uh, you, you know, how is your family involved in that process? Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are first. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of jumping the gun. But mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about who you are. Tell us a little bit about your journey that got you to the space of being the owner, founder of that box of donuts. Okay, so my name is Ashley Rayburn. Um, I live in Belize City. Um, actually, I was originally a science student, so it's funny that I kind of like went into baking, which technically food is science in a way, so yeah. it still went in line, right? But um, having like I was studying to actually become a doctor, and I then decided to do business at UB, and that kind of led me to like entrepreneurship. And I really didn't know what it was about. And the different projects that we did allowed me to really um, step out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And so I realized that I was good at a lot of stuff. So I just, well, I've always loved baking. And my mom has had always been doing donuts with us. 
and making different, you know, like Belizean pastries and cakes, especially my grandmother. So that's basically where it started. Yeah. Awesome. And and so, you know, you went from science pursuing doctor to now baker. <laughs> Being an entrepreneur, that's that's such a, yeah. a, a interesting uh, spin. And, you know, I think it's very consistent. Uh, we had a guest uh, in the previous ex- episode, had a similar journey. I've had a similar journey. You know, why, why do you think entrepreneurship pulls at you? Because, you know, to be an entrepreneur and business owner, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. It has its, its load of uh, challenges. Why do you think it pulls at you? For me, it's like, I've always known that I had this, like, these, this skill, you know, I wanted to do my own thing, you know, even, even if I would like be working with someone, it's like, I have so much more to, to offer, to give, but people yeah. would tend to take that as like a, a little threat. So then I yeah. felt more comfortable doing my own thing, developing my own um, brand and just creating like a legacy for myself in a way, you know. Yeah. I love that. I love that because uh, you, you you said some key buzzwords for me. One, creating a legacy mm-hmm. um, and using entrepreneurship and uh, to create a legacy, but then also creating your own brand. So yeah. let's talk about that because, you know, the, from the first time I met you, we had conversations a, a while back and you were very particular about your brand, your shirt. I watch your products that you send. <laughs> yeah. you, you took ownership of your brand. So talk to us a little bit about your brand. I noticed on your logo, you have a monkey as well. Is it a monkey? Yeah, it's a monkey. Talk, talk to us. Tell, tell us the story behind your brand. What are you envisioning? What were you seeing? And what, were, what are you trying to communicate to your customers, to your brand? Okay. So first of all, um, I would like to mention that, you know, when we think about donuts, we think about our traditional glaze, sugar, cinnamon. Yes, we do offer that, but we also offer a line of gourmet donuts. And uh, um, basically, the brand kind of came into play because I first I, I just came up with the name Dot Box Donuts. And then I was playing around with the little the D and the B, in the, as they know, the initial. And so I sketched something and then I was like, showing my mom this sketch and she saw like a monkey and it, it, it was like it was so perfect because i like i googled the spiritual meaning of a monkey and it was like bringing life bringing laughter and that came up that derived our slogan bringing laughter back into your soul so that's basically mm. our slogan right so like when people would eat the donuts they would be like they they feel so happy it, it just makes them feel great so i was like oh you see the monkey is so perfect like yeah and the funny thing is that my mom saw a monkey but her nickname for me is actually mojo jojo like the <laughs> monkey. I mojo, like, jojo. yes <laughs> i was like that's perfect <laughs> so it was uh, my mom yeah you're, you're taking me back to the the, the cartoon days yeah. mojo, jojo. i remember that <laughs> Well, that's yeah. awesome. I love, I love that. I mean, I love that that desire to bring joy uh, mm-hmm. to the soul, and you know, um, laughter is medicine to the soul. Uh, food, people, food is a big deal. That's a big part of our our lives. You know, we what we consume and what we nourish ourselves with. That's a huge part of our life, and so it's important that the food that we're eating and consuming is actually bringing nourishment and life to our soul, right? Uh, when you're when you're thinking about your brand and that box, and I know you also have another branch, um, I, tell us a little bit about the other branch that you have. So going back to UB, we had an entrepreneurship class and I actually did a project, but I had no idea what the project was going to be about. So I, I just went to sleep one night, got up and I was like, you know what? this is what i'm going to do so we did these little um packages here like it's a pre-mix so you just add water to it it comes with the instructions and everything of course i developed it a bit more and personalized it with my like my logo here this is a um, logo of me and it has on it it's creole mix it's called and they're actually a mixture of my mom's recipe Mm because she actually mastered baking since like 1985 I asked her, she said 1985. <laughs> and so um, the slogan for this is preserving culture through food. So oh, yeah, what we have here, um, the powder bun, tortilla fried jack, and the Johnny cake. This, the, these are the first three three packages that we um, developed. 
Can you share no, those and yeah. bring those back on the screen maybe one at a time so that our audience can see them? Because these okay. are in the stores. Are these in the stores? Well, right now? not yet. So what we're doing, you know, like I said, food is science. So we're, we're like developing and, you know, really perfecting them. So we mm -hmm. have them like people would order them and then we just uh, make them and, and deliver it to the person. Nice. Um, but I love your packaging. Yeah, it actually, if you would really look at it, each packaging has a watermark, like a monument of belief. So this one, you well, you can't really see it clearly, but this one has like the Anglican Cathedral, one has a swing bridge. So it's like yes. really capturing culture through food, like appreciating the history of Belize, you know, because I, I see this going like, like far. <laughs> I, I think that's amazing and I think that's a you know that's such a needed and a unique uh, passion and mission preserving culture through food um, I, and I think it's it's amazing that you're doing that like, even like the, the fried jack like that's anywhere you go that's a typical Belizean meal and then for to know even our fam, our fam, foreign friends can now pick up this pack from you and be able to create this home or pour the bun. Man, yeah. I, I really love it. I want to applaud you. I need to get, I think we'll work on this for the next uh, season. We need to get a, a, a button that we press and then there's a, ah, some kind of noise and excitement. But I really want to applaud you for, for this. I think it's such an amazing uh, task that you've done. And to be so young and to be thinking about preserving culture, uh, because a lot of young people were, were just living our lives. We're not thinking about preserving uh, our heritage, right? And so I, I just really want to applaud you. Where would you say that desire to preserve culture comes from for you? Um, well, I know, like, when I would be cooking, well, I've always, grew, I've been growing up with my um, grandmother from I was small. So she always did this for us. And I was always interested. But a lot of my friends, like, I would ask them, like, do you know how to make, like, a fried jack? They're like, no, my mom, my mom made that for me or my granny made that for me. So, like, you don't really know the history, like, where it came from. You don't know how to, they don't know how to do it. So, I'm like, the, the culture is being lost, you know? Yeah. So, people are going more for, like, their, um, let's say, the, the, to the restaurants or for their fried food or whatever rather than having like a homemade meal you know a fam like bringing family together and you actually making the Belizean food yourself mm. and appreciating it more so that's basically it man guys i just those who are tuning i want to encourage you show some love for ashley and what she's doing in the comment section with some likes um invite some folks to tune in and i just want to encourage you to go and uh, reach out to her and find out how you can utilize and access access her products because I think that's the that's the main point. She's creating these products for us here in Belize and for us to preserve uh, our cultural heritage. And so part of part of doing that means that we need to buy the products, right? It's it's not just a nice it's just a it's just a nice uh, charity uh, um, task that she's doing. It's, it's a business she's doing, and we need to support by buying the products right so ashley how can people get in touch with you and access your services your products okay so we have our facebook and instagram page creole mix and um dot box donuts as well you could also whatsapp the number at 638-8824 awesome yeah. and guys we're going to show you a little bit of the products because i mean Ah, actually, you're hurting me. I'm trying to get off sweets, and then I'm looking at these these wonderful dishes, these wonderful uh, treats that you bake. Man, these are amazing. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here. So, talk to us a little bit what we're seeing here on the screen. Um, mm -hmm. Walk us through some of uh, your products and what what so, what they're what they're about. Yeah. So um, we have uh, like you know the the classic. I would say classic deluxe and the premium flavored donuts. Classics would be your regular vanilla glaze, your chocolate, strawberry, and sugar cinnamon, the, the basic ones, custard and lemon. And then it goes up to the premium, which would be your cheesecake donut, um, like cherry cheesecake, Oreo cheesecake, cold cake. And uh, it's so interesting because what I try to do is like I try to bring some of that Belizean flavor into it, like, a, you know, the cold cake donut or lemon pie donut. And we also have um, like birthday specials that we do. 
that number 21 is actually a 10 inch um wow it's actually a donut people think it's a cake but it's actually a donut yeah oh, wow that's nice <laughs> and then we have like nine inch donut the happy birthday donut we have the little happy birthday letters or you could customize yeah that's actually a nine inch cherry cheesecake donut in the middle wow. there yeah that is quite unique that that and the intricacy okay so my wife is an artist and so she's always watching uh, these creative shows, how they're making things, and I'm I'm amazed the, the the attention to details, and going this. Anyone can do something that's big, but when you start craft something really small and make it look like that, like I mean, seriously, let's let's look at it again. When you when you can make things look like this, to me that's a special skill set, um, and and I really I'm really uh, excited. I want to applaud you for it, like. How did you learn how to do this? Like, how much hours would you say you put into to sharpening your craft? And um, help us to understand your your process. Well, my grandmother has always been um, baking cakes from like we were small, so we grew up around bakers. My mom, my aunt, everybody. So, like, I guess it was always within me. Mm -hmm. And my mom, like, when I would like not be able to, let's say create something the way I wanted. She was like, okay, Ashley, just calm down. It's already within you. Whatever mm. you need to know mm, is I within you. And then it just comes out. I mean, she's not here right now with me anymore, but um, um, that word still, that that the word still, you know, live within me and yeah, that's what I go by. That. Yeah. Man, that's amazing. It's within you. No, I... Uh, there's something I talk about a lot when I speak, and it's it's this whole thing that everything that you need is within you. What we need to learn to do is mine that treasure. We need to learn to dig and find it and then bring it out and release it to the world, right? And sometimes we get scared when we we start to dig and then we find dirt. <laughs> and we get scared when it gets messy. But the truth is it's that 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 ability to push through the dirt till we get to the goal and we get to the diamond, right? So I just want to encourage those who are watching as well, I, I, I want to resonate what Ashley is saying. Everything we need is really within us. We just got to learn how to dig. We got to learn how to mine. And we, we can't get intimidated and scared when we hit up the, the, the dirt stuff because they're there, you know. But that's not our goal. We're going for the treasure. We're going for the diamond. Ashley, what, as we're wrapping up, what are some of the biggest things you had to overcome in getting your business off the ground? But, if, you know, part of our show is to give entrepreneurs and those who are watching practical tips and lessons we've learned on our own journey right so what are some of the things that you've learned um, and things you've had to overcome in getting your business off the ground and getting it to where it's at today well i'm still you know working on a lot of things but the main thing would be for me is like um just like i have anxiety right that's yeah. the truth and just being able to cope with that and you know the stress of a business that was the biggest thing that i had to deal with so i'm working on it and i'm still working on it and i mean i still have a long way to go right yeah. in terms of that but i mean i still i don't want to give up yet because some days you know you get up and it's like oh you know what i'm just done yeah. but then you also have that support from like friends and customers as well who keep like 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 an everyday reminder to like just keep on going and going you know so that's that that's my support and that's awesome and you know i think it's it's true and we spoke about this uh this month we've been talking about mental health and in the importance of it so we've had a couple of episodes about that and making sure that we're guarding and protecting what's happening up here in our mind mm -hmm. and what's happening in our heart and as entrepreneurs and business owners we we get slammed all the time i mean we're taking risks we're stepping out there um with new ideas we're not sure how it will be received and so it's so important that we guard our mental health we guard our heart we guard our minds and learning how to do that right and i, I agree with you having a support system Having your network, your community around you, that's so, such a key, key yeah. part of the process, right? And so uh, I, I just really want to thank you, Ashley, for just coming on and sharing your story, your journey with us. I think uh, those who are tuning definitely were inspired by what you're doing. What advice would you leave with any 
one who wants to get their business off the ground? I would just say, just do it. Yeah. That like just get up and do it, honestly. Because, I mean, it's like a, a great experience when you like watch, like from where you started, like like yeah. last year, one year ago, I wasn't like at this point, you know. So just looking back, it's like man, I like came such like a long way, you know. So just do it. Awesome. Uh, actually, we have a question that came in here. I want to ask. Um, how do you manage, how did you manage the startup, uh, balancing school, business, balancing oh. family, everything? Like, talk to us a little bit about your wow. your balancing process. <laughs> this question was from Sharina as well that came in. Okay. So, time management. I mean, like, I'm very strict with how, like, you know, I do things. I mean, I'm not perfect, but mm -hmm. I just schedule everything and I always had help to, like, like I have my son, so like I would schedule. Okay, someone would watch him, and I make sure I do my work, my schoolwork, and everything. Because right now I'm doing actually doing a master's as well, so it's like oh, crazy. Wow. So I just manage my time properly. I try to do my best, you know. I love it. I love it. So guys, you heard it from Ashley. Time management. Uh, again, we did an episode on that with Miss Charlotte Neal, and and so if you wanna, all our episodes, guys, all our uh, all our past. Uh, shows are archived on our website, creativemondayshow.com. And I do want to encourage you guys to go there and find content. This, the content is there that's, that is designed to really help you on your journey, to help inspire, motivate, and transform your lives, to give you tools from entrepreneurs that are actually doing it. You know, sometimes it's good to have the theory, but then you also want to hear how did that play out with someone when they put that into practice? Did it work? And so a lot of the content we have there is practical, uh, experiential tips and lessons that, that have worked for us in our space, right? So I want to encourage you guys to make sure that you go to creativeonthishow.com, tune in and get those information. So we want to thank Ashley for being with us again tonight. Remember to go uh, to her Facebook page, to go to her uh, everywhere online where she's at, can we get that on the screen? Uh, reach out to her. Her phone number should be running on the screen, I think, soon. But give her a call. Reach out to her. Send her an email. Order some of her products. And especially Christmas is coming up. This is a perfect time to get some amazing treats uh, for, for and gifts for the Christmas holidays. And so uh, thank you so much, Ashley. It definitely was a pleasure having you on with us tonight. Okay. Thank you, too. Awesome. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we get back, we'll be talking with Mr. Jose uh, Collado. And he is a, a med I call him a media expert. Initially, when we when we reached out to him, uh, we were like reaching out to him in the capacity of a in the capacity of a musician. But we found out he is way more than a musician. And so we 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 are so excited to uh, just talk a little bit with him tonight and explore his own journey. So let's take a little break and then we go get back. We will have Jose on the line. The National Channel brings you all the action from all around the country. Watch the games live and in high definition. Follow us on Facebook for updates, upcoming events, and much more. TNC 10 the leading national sports station exclusively on Central TV and Internet. All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the Creative Monday Discussion Show. I am your host, Mervin Badram. I, uh, I uh, want to encourage you guys. I love the energy. I love the comments. Let's keep them coming. Invite our friends in to participate participate with us i actually started with that promo because uh as well we want to thank tnc tnc is one of our partners help us amplify the message uh we're aired on tnc here in belize and they're one of our partners and that ad that you saw was actually uh produced or uh jose was part of the production team for that ad uh, so we we just wanted to uh, start off with one of the work he's worked on as we're introducing him for the evening. So good evening, Jose. How are you doing, man? Welcome to the Creative Good evening, Show. Mervin. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, man. I'm honored. Man. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. I really love, I've been watching your work and I really love the quality of your work and I'm really excited oh, to kind of hear a little bit of your journey. Uh, you know, sure. talk to us a little bit about 
uh, who you are, help help our audience to kind of get a uh, quick overview of who you are and all that you do. And I say all ah, because <laughs> you don't just do one thing. You have many hats that you're wearing, right? So talk to us a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, well, um, I'm um, Jose Collado. I'm 35. Um, I'm a video editor, graphic designer, technician, um, technical director, artist, composer, audio engineer, and amongst other stuff that I do. Well. Man, I love it. I love it. You. That's why I said when uh, we introduced you, you're, to me, you're a media expert, someone who really uh, took media seriously and you're embracing the full scope of what that is right and you're building yes, that out yeah. so how yeah. did you get into this space like where did it all start for you well it started back in the 2000 i believe 2005 or so like i got my first computer and everything's like crumbled down from there like i got into the well the first thing was i installed pc games you know <laughs> that was the first thing but after that you know the mechanics and everything the computers and the other softwares, you know, it started teaching me a lot of things. And then I found what I really was interested in and just followed that path. And it had led me up to now. <laughs> up to Man, now. That's, that's great. You you shared this with me last week when we were talking about, uh, you said when you got the first PC, it was games you were locked in on. And, you know, you were encouraging, you know, as we were talking, encouraging parents in a sense that sometimes it's easy to, to look at a child, oh, they're just playing games, they're wasting time. What are some of the benefits um, uh, from gaming that, that helps you or helps an individual in media and different areas of their life that you've experienced or you've seen? Right, right. Well, the way it helped me, well, it was uh, to understand how, how you can install a program, how, how you can troubleshoot if it's not working. Well, you know, like little, little technical things that, that teach you a lot more than just the game itself, you know, like even like installing patches or... Uh, getting updates and stuff like that 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 you get like a wider understanding of of what you're doing you know like it's not just the game and from that you you know there's many other branches that it leads to you know like uh the web uh, the internet itself it's like a whole world in itself there you know and yeah. software the different software is just amazing that what all you can do with with the computer software that's that's n nowadays it's just amazing yeah but i i that i my girls love games i'm not a big gamer but when you shared that with me last week it, it made me rethink rethink yes. some of that because mm -hmm. like you're saying they're you know they're they're doing something that they enjoy and then when it breaks they want to fix it because they that's something they love so it, it's right. giving them positive motivation yeah, exactly. to learn right so that's that's no, one of yeah. the benefits and then exactly I, I my see. son i'm sorry to cut no, you no, off. Go, go for it uh it's a living example of what we're talking about like my son he he started with the uh, well i got his computer you know because i knew like this is the way you know like we have to go with the flow and then he he uh installed a game but you know he played on it then he he got bored but now he's actually helping me uh edit videos as well wow. like I, I have let him into that you know he he knows the games he knows uh how to build his computer as well he got his computer parts and wow. everything and now that's he's amazing. helping me edit videos as well yeah that's amazing guys this is mm -hmm. this is family legacy if part of how yes. you get your kids involved part of that process man i love this you're you're really making me rethink games and so i'll, I'll talk <laughs> with my wife right and see where, what we need to shift shift in that gaming aspect of things right my my yeah. girls they they love um, doing making home videos that they walk around making home videos because nice. I'm on a show. So they're like, they want to have their show one of these days. I guess what the family yeah. is doing, what the parents are doing, heavily influence the direction that the kids go. And I'm, I'm right. sharing that specifically because you kind of got into this space because of your dad, right? So talk to us a little bit yeah. about what your dad did in the earlier years that has helped impact you and carve you, uh, kind of carve the path for you. Yeah, well, that, that's that's more like the other facet of my 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 life, right? The the music, which which was uh, which also is a big part of my life as well. Uh, since my father, he is a musician. He has uh, ten CDs recorded already, and mm -hmm. I started um, getting into music because he uh, he created a home studio. Well, he got the equipment for the home studio, and um, we learned how to operate the the machines and how to record. So from there, as when I got into music as well, like creating little beats and 
recording and you know like in i got into that as well so that's also a big part of my life as well and i i do recordings for other artists and i mm -hmm. do my own recordings for my music as well so it, Man, it has worked I, uh, both ways i love it and i i you never you didn't say it, so i'll say this and i want to bring this up because i think it's 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 a key point to to be aware of but your dad brought uh an engineer from guatemala brought him to yes. belize to set up your home studio, then made sure that you were there to learn right. how to maintain it. Talk to us a little bit about how that went about for you. Yeah, yeah, because uh, when when he came, like there was like a bunch of cables, like a thousand cables, like, and he was soldering them like from the from scratch, you know. And so uh, he wanted us to to, to learn um, about that. Um, my brother actually was the one that caught up with the soldering and more the, mm -hmm. the technical stuff and I was more interested in like the the recording and how to mix and how to the levels and you know how do you get from this point to this point and and he was more into like the hardware stuff and fixing yeah. little cables and like that but eventually we we just I learned a lot from him and then eventually he left and I was the one that was left in in charge of the recordings and everything because my dad was like he wasn't uh he didn't know anything about the the computers and the the machine so he left everything on me like kind of like threw me in the water and all right just <laughs> Got to swim. learn it you know <laughs> so but then after the internet came up came on and you know everything was done through research there so if there was something that I, I didn't know i went to the internet and search and how to do this how to do this and that's how i you know like uh went um solving the the problems that that came up mm -hmm. You know, Jose, what, what you're talking about here, and I, you know, for our audience watching and those who will watch afterwards, and let me ask you this first before I say what I want to say. How old were you when your dad did that? What, what age would you say you were? Uh, probably that was uh, around 14, 15. Yeah. Uh, like around that age. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And, and that's, yeah. that's the point I wanted to draw out. You know, many times, you know, as parents, and I have kids, I have three girls, it's easy to have our kids on the sidelines while we're doing the stuff out there, we're saving the world, mm -hmm. we're conquering. Right. And we have our kids on the sidelines watching, but you know, it's powerful. It's even oh, yeah. more powerful to get them involved from a young age to start learn and to give them a spot to, to operate because it sparks within them. And I, I see this with you, what it does, it sparks within you a hunger right. to learn, a hunger to grow. And you've said it, you got on the internet and you started to research and say, hey, how mm -hmm. do I fix this? How do I address this area? And then you you became an asset to the vision that right. your dad was doing. But actually what was happening, you were learning some skill sets for what you're doing now. Because in the, the media, yes. um, it's a lot of technology, it's a lot of research, it's changing every day, uh, it's changing very quickly. And so it's important for us to stay on top of it. And so you... Your dad created yeah. an environment for you to, to be a researcher, to be exactly. a studier. Talk to yeah. us a little bit about the importance of education and developing yourself and what you've learned from that process. Yeah, it, I mean, it's very important to to teach yourself, you know, to to have the responsibility to, to teach yourself, to go and take your time to research on something that interests you, uh, something that you feel passionate about, especially you know you want to learn more uh, you want to be more in detail of how this how can i achieve this and and if if your interest is there and you, your motivation you w once you go into uh, research you you find the solutions you find what you need and you know you you capture that information and you you know practice it as well in your daily stuff that you do you know so i think it's very important to educate yourself to, yeah. to research to you know to find information I always read a lot uh on the on the things that interest you and and passion and makes you feel you know passionate about so on average keep, but yeah yeah on average how much hours would you say you spend on research um for the week on average wow <laughs> It's a lot of research. Every day yeah. is research, you know. Yeah. Every day you learn something new, and you're it's it's been. There's no way you can you can count the hours that that you've been. It's it's like you're. It's a daily thing, you know. You you research daily. It's yeah. something you can never like learn everything. So you're always learning new stuff every day. And that, that's amazing. So so what we want to do, Jose? I'm going to show a video, and we've been talking, guys. Those who are just tuning in, we're talking to Jose, Jose Collado. Uh, he is a in my book, he's a media expert. 
Um, and we're going to dive a little bit more into that. Why I say that he's a musician. Um, he is also, uh, he is not just doing work here in Belize, but he actually has clients uh, outside of Belize. So he's actually exporting his service uh, outside of Belize, right? And so he can, he, there's a lot you can learn from him. So I, I want to encourage if you have questions, if you want to know how to do certain uh, things, especially the sure. media or exporting your business and things like that, feel free to use the comment uh, section to reach out. But let, let's pull this video up. Jose, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the your work you've done and kind of how you kind of got to that level of excellence and quality in your work. So let's let's take a look at this quick video. The way you watch TV is changing. Now get one app for all your streaming needs. Live sports, live action, global news coverage, local news, 24-hour live, reality TV, and all the TV drama on demand. Your personal cinema. My TV, entertainment, anytime, anywhere. Start your free trial today. Next Gen, powered by Central TV and Internet. And the, this is some amazing work. This is Thank amazing you. work I'm seeing. Um, you know, and there's not a lot of people that, that I know of that can put this quality of work together. So uh, yeah. talk to us a little bit about the services you offer. Talk to us a little bit about uh, wh what type of work you've done, where you've been over the years, and kind of that, that your process and your journey um, in the, the Belize media space. Sure. Uh, well, um, through the years, I've been in multiple media houses around Belize. You know, I worked in uh, Belmopan and Belize City and San Ignacio and now finally here in Benke. I've uh, worked in multiple video production uh, projects like documentaries, uh, concerts, music videos. Um, I've done a lot of commercial work like for small businesses and bigger businesses as well. And um, finally, now I'm doing uh, video editing projects for uh, clients in the U.S., um, in uh, Los Angeles and in uh, Houston. So they, they outsource uh, video editing projects and I do, do it from home and send them back and we collaborate in that way. So that, that's been like a very good uh, thing for me right now, because uh, especially for this um, COVID um, you know, problem that we have now that it's it's hard to go outside more than that we used to. Yeah, um, it's been it's been very helpful for me for um to to find a way to to still work and do it from 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 home, you know, and and, and be able to to do the, these services even though we're we're here, you know. So yeah, man, as you know, Jose, one of the things that, as you were talking just now, I realized there's a whole new freelance community i think that's kind of sparking in belize um yes. and you know so there's a lot of there's a lot of production personnel whether video whether photography uh whether um design and that's working mm -hmm. internationally because of the pandemic you're working multiple companies yeah. you're working um with companies online as well as companies here in yeah. belize what have you learned uh, on your own journey in terms of freelancers like what are some key things that you need to so I would say keep in mind as you're, you're working in that capacity, what are some lessons you've right. learned? What are some do's and don'ts of the freelance space? If you, if you could shed some lights in that from what you've learned. Sure. Um, well, in terms of uh, um, getting the work done, um, well, uh, to, to know your equipment, um, to know your what you're using, what you're doing, you know, to have a, a sense of direction as to what output you, you want to, or create how the video will look more or less in, at the end, you know. So that the equipment is is important, but the most important thing I, I think is your the way you approach the the work, the the how you feel about about doing this, you know, the the positive the positivity that you bring mm -hmm. into the project. Because sometimes we say like, oh, this is work, and you know, like I think that has plays a lot of. Uh, a major role in in the output of the project the, the way you approach it the way you you uh feel about it because um it's like everything if you if you if you're mad you know it, it won't come out good you know so yeah. you have to you have to be humble respectful and everything with the client especially you know um your attitude has to be right um sometimes they ask for stuff that you know you might not be like Oh, uh, this wasn't part of it, but you know you have to be uh, patient, and you, you know I will always have a 
good attitude with your client and then that will lead to to more work eventually and you know like they will be happy with you and and with that uh combined with a good quality production then that's it you know like you've captured them they will come back for more work yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's so. awesome what what would you say have been your the hardest part of your job the hardest part of um getting your business off the ground and being in the space that you're in i think uh the hardest part well has been that um you know it's um it's not always gonna it's it's there's not always um a high demand for yeah. for this this kind of work but as i see it now like time is changing like like the yeah. like social media and everything like there's a lot more demand now than before in uh, everything that's video production and graphic design and, and whatnot right so right now i see i see like a window is opening where a lot of people will get the opportunity to to uh, branch out into all these uh, multimedia services that they can provide you know and not even not just in belize but uh, outside of belize you know globally so like uh it's important like i tell everyone you know get get your skills up you know if you if, if you have a little graphic design training just uh learn more you know like get your go in the uh, online teach yourself more about it you know find ways to to learn new skills so that um in the future that for sure is gonna be you know you can use those to your advantage so cool 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 yeah. i love that let's talk a little bit about um kind of i don't want to use pricing because pricing can be so varying depending on who you're working to but how yes. do you how do you value or figure out what's the best value for your service because you know one of the challenge service providers have at times is there's a product the difference is a product and a service a product there's a set price that's the right. price there's not much place for negotiation it's on the shelf you either want it or you don't, you don't want it right many times it mm -hmm. seems that way as a service provider often uh, clients come and depending on the different service providers in the area a, a, it, a, it impacts where you can place your value and your price how do right. you go about setting your value and your price and how do you make sure that you're getting the you're getting the level that you're comfortable with and you want right um yeah that's that's a very hard question because it's always <laughs> hard to price to, to to put a price on something you know but um yeah. through the years i think you you get a feel of it you get you get to more or less gauge how much you should charge and how much is undercharging and how much is overcharging and and you know how how far or how much you can charge particular clients you know so it's it's like uh kind of like it it's it's very it it differs from client to client and mm -hmm. from situation to, uh, you know from project to project because each each project is a unique you know piece of work and and sometimes it requires more more hours of of your time and sometimes it's just very quick you can get it done in a few hours so all of that um, comes into play when when you're um, creating an estimate for your client like if someone calls me and say like i want a, a 30 second commercial of my my store and just uh you know like i would say well if depends where it is i would charge i'll say um for those uh expenses plus the the time i will spend editing the video you know plus the shooting the the equipment you know it's expensive to 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 bring it and all of this those will play a a a, a role in how much you you will charge it and, and you don't want to overcharge as well because you know you you want to show the client that you can do the work and and he will for sure be happy so you want to sh do the work you want to get it done so that he can say okay next time i know he for yeah. sure he you know he has the skills to do what i want and he won't mind paying extra for the, yeah. the second job you know? yeah it's, yeah so it will be kind of like it goes uh progressing or you know or declining depending so it's it's very hard to say like how much yeah. your services work yeah it's an intricate balance. I mean, I, I, I get you. It's mm -hmm. it's not a cookie cutter type of answer. Um, but I think I yeah. think the, the simple um the simple truth is that 
each of us need to figure out what we're comfortable with and kind of have that um, that space in our budget, that space in our pricing where I say, I, I can't budge below this, right? And then, mm -hmm. and then be able to kind of just um, talk with the clients. And actually, one of the things that you were sharing just now, I realized there's, there's so much need right now to educate clients and customers in the, especially in Belize, in the digital media right. space. Because I'll give you an example. I often get this from clients. Hey, I want an animation. And animation can be anything. It's so broad. Mm -hmm. And so right. knowing knowing the language and knowing how to approach a, a video producer, a animator, a graphic designer, and knowing what to say is, is becoming more and more important so that, yeah. that they can know how to properly price and know the scope of the job, right? So I do exactly. want to encourage those watching i want to encourage uh folks to to start educate yourself in mm -hmm. the in the media space and kind of how to relate to it production personnel um Hossett, uh, yeah. i i want to kind of go a little bit and i know you're not in the music space right now and that's not kind of the, the major thing but just talk to us a little bit about what all have you done in that space and you said it has impacted what you're doing now how how does your music capacity influence what you're doing right now in your video um, business at the moment okay yeah um well as as you know um i have a bamboo studio productions that's a small recording studio here in benque viejo and we do uh from voiceovers to recording uh instruments to to um um, everything that's audio production. So we, we, we do recordings and mix and master um, of music. So um, I do my own music. I, I write my songs. I do my beats. I do um, my marketing of my music as well. I have my YouTube channel, um, Phantom BZ. If you want to check it out, I have uh, several music videos and different songs that I've done. And um, I just uh, like to to record like different artists here that come and they they want to they, they want to record a song i i'm you know i'm very happy always to to help them record it to get the sound that that they like and um you know to push the talent as well and and to move the music forward in a sense you know it's very hard it's been hard here in belize um, um but we now have the opportunity to put our music out there globally as well yeah. like, through, through the different distribu um, distributors that are online. Uh, we can make uh, our music be on Spotify, on Apple Music and all of that. Very, very simple simple now to, to make all that process happen. Not like before, it was it was yeah. difficult. It was harder to, to get all that done, but now it's there and the opportunity is for everyone to, to get on, you know, so. All of this music uh, has helped me also in the video as well because audio and video go go hand in hand. So mm -hmm. it's been like uh, it's been linked very very nicely like for me um, with audio production and video understanding and uh, feeling the 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 video itself because video needs a lot of music and or sound effects and stuff like that. So it has helped me. Uh, be more uh, creative in, in that aspect, you know, adding the, the audio to, to to match the videos and like the and also music videos, which is a big part of my uh, my business as well. I do a lot of music videos I, um, for different artists, you know. Um, I'm working with this artist, Flaco Leslie, did a music video for him. It, it's like 60,000 K in YouTube yeah. right now. That's so like, like very nice production. Um, yeah. So awesome. all of that, you know, it's it's interlinked and it's it just makes the workflow very smooth and very intuitive, you know, like from. Mm -hmm. Man, that's awesome, man. I, I just want to thank you, Jose, for just thank sharing you. your heart and sharing your journey with us. I feel like um, people definitely need to connect more into what you're doing. And so how can how can people yeah. find you? How can they get in touch with you and learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, sure. People, um, I'm on Facebook as uh, Ralph West, or you could uh, email me to ralphjc at gmail.com or WhatsApp me on 632-6945. That's my phone number. And uh, you can ask me anything you want, you know, like I'm open to any questions. If, if you want a certain production done, if you if you want to record a, a track, uh, if you're a small business owner, you can contact me for video production projects that you know i always try to 
to help small businesses as well grow their businesses by by not charging them a, a huge amount for a for a certain production you know, i try to always um help small businesses as well um push their their products or services because it's something that i feel they need to see what the what they what's the difference but when they do a little bit of of video production or graphic design yeah. how much it can push their their businesses and ho how much yeah. better it can look you know just the presentation wise and stuff like that so it's always a good feeling as well to help small businesses you know push their brand a little farther and that's amazing and i i just i do want to encourage folks reach out take advantage of that offer um jose is and you're in the Binky era, so there's a lot of tourism yes. in that space as well. So I want to encourage you guys to reach out to him um, and, and utilize his services, right? Because it's especially in this time, we, we need we need it and we you need to have good quality uh, content out there if you're going to make it in this current um, climate that we're in. It, it's no longer okay to put cheesy videos out there. They kind mm -hmm. of put quality and um, Jose is one resource that you can definitely tap into in this time jose my last question for you as we're wrapping up um I, what's the future for you what what are some of the your future goals um and and what what's what where do you see yourself and your company in the next let's say five ten years yeah well the the main goal i think in the future is to create uh unique videos that will inspire people and i'm i'm talking about productions like uh small uh, uh movies and uh you know small documentaries historic documentation and and deeper projects that will you know like uh open the minds of people more into like uh teaching them or giving them information and sharing uh, uh a different level of uh production you know here in belize like uh like a short film is is definitely a part of what i want to do in the future like a very nice uh film and uh definitely keep working on more music videos um documentaries you know commercials and everything video production and audio production that's that's gonna be the future man that's amazing uh, amazing yeah. amazing amazing well thank you so much for being with us tonight thank you thank for you sharing. for having me yeah, yeah definitely and we 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 gotta stay in touch um for media sure. production is also very obviously passionate and uh, one of my passions and um so i, I look forward to yeah. seeing where your journey will take you and hopefully we can do also do some collaboration right for so sure. thank you so much for for being on the show tonight guys i want to say thank you to everyone as well for tuning in for all the comments um we, i saw a lot of people came out for our guests and we do want to encourage you guys to keep uh supporting our local entrepreneurs keep supporting uh business and part of how you do that is buying local uh, and let's try to keep our money as much as possible local and support these entrepreneurs business owners uh in belize right and so we want to thank you guys for tuning in tonight it was definitely a pleasure being with you we have um i just want to thank tnc as again uh, Caribbean invest tv as well as solar rise tv for broadcasting the show and really amplifying partnering with us in getting the show out to all of you i want to thank you guys for tuning in weekly for making the show your show um, and helping us to build a healthy community and also to help us to inspire motivate and transform lives we do want to thank our team we have an amazing team that works diligently behind the scenes to make the show happen every week so i want to take the time to thank my wife ruth the producer of the show um kimana gillette our project coordinator Joshua, our assistant production in office here, as well as Shereen, who handles our social media uh, content that goes out. We want to thank our team for just their diligence in putting in the work to make sure that you get a quality show and you're getting content that will definitely inspire, motivate, and transform your lives. I want to remind you guys to treat every day like it's a Monday, and I will see you back again next week. Actually, we're having our season finale show next week monday where we're coming to the end where we're wrapping up uh this season and uh, we're going to take our christmas break and then we're going to return next year with season five so we're very excited uh, if you want to learn more about the show if you want to be a guest and be a part of the show uh, go to creativeontheshow.com and, and find our contact information and reach out to us you can uh, just zip us an email hello at creativeontheshow.com or you can send us a message as well at 623 uh, 7898 and you can find out uh, more how to be a part of the show 
and get your story amplified and told. Have a good day. God bless you. And I'll see you again next week, Monday.